Hey, this is Jake from Cabin Boy Jump Ship. You're watching Chana 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 Podcast. You can also check out our music video for Demons and Survivor on YouTube. Let's go. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of my podcast. We have a very special guest today joining all the way from United Kingdom. We got Jake Devonport of Cabin Boy Jump Ship. Hi, Jake. Hey. Hey buddy, hey Jana, how you doing? How's the UK? How's the morning in UK? I tell you what, with the lack of sleep and uh, the early morning, I'm I'm all good to go. I'm ready for this podcast. It's, <laughs> uh, it's I know it's 10 a.m., but when you did go sleep until seven this morning, it's uh, it's it's an early one, mate. It's an early one, but I'm all I'm all good to go. Right. So so Jake, well, which 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 city are you in in UK? So, so I'm based in London. I'm um, East London on the border of Essex. So right, that's where right. But I, I, I grew up uh, in North London. Right. So, so how is this? How is the situation now in uh, in London? Because I know that all the the restriction and stuff were removed now, right? Recently. The yeah, they recently just got removed. But if you're from London, you'll understand when I say no one really cared anyway. So right. everyone was still out. Everyone was still doing their thing. It was just the only thing was it was like it was mandatory to wear a mask in a shop. Um, I think that one's going now though. But some people still wear masks. Some people don't. It's it's, it's been very chilled here. Uh, I will say the government have not been too great with it though. But we won't go into politics today. Right. <laughs> so how is the live music situation over there? live um so it, it was going great obviously it was there was nothing for a good long while and then shows all started coming back in bands started booking shows again it was all uh it was all going quite well um but i've noticed a lot of the american bands mainly that were coming over have all started canceling their tours right. so they, between like now january and to about march there were so many international bands coming over, especially ones that I would like to have gone seen. I've got some, I've actually got some tickets up on my board over there of bands that I wanted to go see that they've all cancelled or, um, or postponed it. So for international, I don't think it's too good. I think some of the UK bands uh, here, their, their, their shows are still going ahead. So it's a bit hit and miss at the moment. So. Right. Uh, Jake, have you seen this, uh, poster for this festival when we were young festival have you seen that i mean who hasn't let's be honest <laughs> if you haven't seen it then you, you don't own a phone or a pc that's so uh, outrageous right that lineup is outrageous it's it's mad bands would pay millions of pounds to jump on that like do, do you know what's really annoying about that post we we was just announcing uh one of our singles and we put up the first teaser for this brand new single that we're about to release. And we're like, this is going to be big. We're buzzing. Literally at the exact same time they posted the when we were young festival. So our post just got absolutely lost. So right. we had to like delete it and re-upload it again a couple of hours later because we, it got lost in that massive hype of this new festival. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, it's it's an incredible festival. I know a few of my friends uh, that are flying over there to go to it because it's just that good of a lineup. Right. Um, obviously, there's a lot of controversy on it. A lot of people are saying, "Oh, it's not going to be this good. It's going to be rubbish." And and pfft, I don't know. My my vocalist Connor, uh, uh, Connor of Cabin Boy, he he was like this close to going. He was like, oh, I'm booking flights, I'm, I'm going. But I, I don't know if he actually ended up uh, getting the tickets or not, but I know he was so close to going. Right. And 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 once that 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 poster came up, you, you saw that there was like a glam rock version of it, hardcore version of it, and all these different versions of that came came out, right? <laughs> oh, oh, well, like uh, different, uh, different genres wanted to start their own festival of the same year. Right, right, right. <laughs> I've, oh yeah, I've I've seen the deathcore ones, but <laughs> I, I, the annoying thing is, I kind of wish they were true. I'd love to go see like an all deathcore festival that of like old deathcore bands or old metalcore bands. Right. I, I would have loved that, but obviously they're just parodies. So, right. 
<clears throat> so so cabin boy jump ship so who is who is in cabin boy jump ship can you tell me the li- lineup who's who's there okay so there has been a few lineup changes over the years but this uh lineup there's currently four of us so uh you have me my name is jake i play bass i do the odd vocals on some songs um then we've got connor he is our screamer our main vocalist he he runs the band he's the main guy everyone speaks to you've got uh reese he's the drummer and the clean singer he does like all the writing the production he's very talented and then you've got abel which is the newest member of the band he joined about two years ago but we Mm -hmm. only announced him a couple of months ago um so he he's on the new album he's been writing the new album verse he's on the new music videos we've just released so uh yeah so 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 you were you're in the band from 2016 i I think so i've been in the band since uh december 2016 um i was in previous (laughs) projects with um other other members and i've known connor for about 15 years um Basically, long story short, they had a a tour coming up. They needed a bass player for. This is Cabin Boy, by the way, Cabin Boy Jump Ship. They had a tour coming up in Germany, and they needed a session bassist. So they asked me. I said, "Yeah, sure, why not?" We're out there, and um, and then at the end of the tour, they they asked me to join, and I was a bit hesitant at first because I was like, "Ah." Oh, oh but then i said yes and now here i am and that's great because i i had other projects going on but they they didn't work so it it worked out for the best right right so so jay can you tell me a little bit about your childhood and all what's your earliest uh, memory of music uh my childhood my childhood um was nothing to do with music <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. My uh, my dad, he he was big into music, and um, so I guess that's where it's kind of where it came from. But we, when when I, it was basically when I got to secondary school is where music really started for me. I've always wanted to like tour the world, so that was one thing I knew I wanted to do when I was a kid. But then mm-hmm. when I got introduced to music uh, in secondary school. I could I found out that there was bands that tour the world and play music. Mm. So um long story short I was in year 8 and I believe that is you're about 12 13 years old. So I was barely a teenager and uh four, four of my friends were there was a friend group of us uh, about six or seven of us but four of them was like we should start a little band. So I was like, yeah, sure, why not? None of us knew what instruments were. So we, we had to like Google what, what instruments were in a band. Right. So <laughs> so we was like, oh, there's a drummer, there's a bass player, two guitarists, uh, vocals. And so and, and we were just searching up like some 41, like what, what members were in the band. And th- obviously at the time they've got like keyboard player. We was like, no, we don't need those. So, <laughs> right. so uh, yeah, basically uh, we all just picked an instrument uh, and somehow I got bass. So I went to our local shop, I bought a hundred pound bass, which is very cheap. And uh, yeah, we're, the rest is history. And now here I am still playing bass. Well, 16 years later. Right. So, yeah. What sort of what sort of bands do you remember, like from from those early start dates? What sort of music did you listen to? <laughs> so um, the the same friend group they got me into uh, Sum Forty One, uh, Green Day, uh, your average pop punk bands like that. We started doing like covers when we started our little band project in school, and then um, we went from playing pop punk covers and we as as we was like getting older we started like progressing of what we're listening to so our one of the guys um uh actually started listening to a bit of metal so he was like guys have a listen to this let me know what you think so the first ever metal song i ever heard was uh lamb of god black label right the live at hellfest that was the first ever metal song i ever heard 
and because it was live at Hellfest, damn, dude, like there, there was just madness going on. I've never heard a metal song, and I just vibed to it, dude. I was like, this is awesome. So I didn't know what the hell was going on. I didn't know what metal music was. I was just like, it's pop punk, but really loud, <laughs> really fast, <laughs> and screaming. So yeah, we we um I I, I uh, grew from there, went into Arch Enemy, uh, went into Machine Head, went in, and then and then I started getting heavier, and I went into like black metal, Dimmu Borgir, Mayhem, Burzum, and that's what I was with for a good while. I went into a proper black metal phase in my life. And then I kind of toned it down, went back to metal, and then I went into metal core and obviously if you know all your genres you'll know like that's a big step so and um, now I, I i'm a bit of everything when it comes to the metal genre but um yeah black metal and metal are like a big part of my life that's what i grew up on right right uh, you mentioned lamb of god and arch enemy those are actually like yeah. a couple of my favorite bands i've seen them a couple of times already arch enemy man they they, they have made me who i am like Angela right. Gosso, fuck, dude, that that woman that she created who I am today. Like, I, honestly, I I love that woman. And then um, Randy Bliff, Lamb of God, Rob Flynn, Machine Head, just th- th- those characters, th- those people. They that I wouldn't be here today without them. So I I grew up around like proper metal, like long hair push pit like yeah let's go let's have a good one like that so th- those sort of shows were what i was into when i was growing up right so so uh, what sort of influences you have on on playing bass who, who do you like so i'm going to be honest um when it comes to influences with bass players i never really took on to anyone when i was growing up um obviously you had cone from sum 41 um because mm. he was like the first bass player i saw when i was learning to play bass so i guess he kind of gave me that play my bass low sort of vibe um that i kind of took on <coughs> um and uh, but as i said i never really took on someone like i want to be like that person because i always wanted to be my own person i guess when it comes to uh, what basses I wanted to play, I really liked to uh, uh, offend a Geddy Lee bass because a lot of basses in the genre were uh, kind of doing those basses. Uh, and then I've just kind of modelled my thing off that. We, um, I, I really wanted to try a different sort of bass. So uh, do you know Good Charlotte? Yeah. Well, the good Charlotte bass player, I forgot his name. Um, he was playing a five string bass and I didn't know what the difference was when I was younger. I didn't know what the difference between a five string and a four string was. So um, because of him, I went out and bought a five string and I learned what a five string bass was. And I've not turned back since. I've played five string ever since. So because of good Charlotte, I've got a five string. But yeah, that I, I don't I don't have an influence. I've just kind of, looked at other bass players and modeled myself off them like i I guess you could say uh fit for a king their bass player he's got a very incredible stage presence Mm. and recently i was uh talking to the guys about it he posted up a video of like how he does like his bass spin it's like with his with his guitar and all that lot and i was like i really want to learn that that looks incredible so i went out into my garden for like four hours i was just learning how to do it so um, I guess like bass players that have high energy on stage is who I model myself off of. But I've kind of got my own, I've got my own um, stance when it comes on stage. A lot of ba- bass players, I- I've actually been told that bass players look like me when I'm playing. So I- I'm I'm glad I like to have my own sort of performance on stage. And I've made that myself, so I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, I mean I've seen you. I've seen the music videos, right? So you you guys, you I mean really nice to see you know when you're performing bass. Uh, Jake, I I saw on your Facebook you you actually posted you're selling a Brompton. 
<laughs> you know why I'm asking? Because why I are you actually, asking? Because I actually have four Bromptons because uh, I'm just crazy about Brompton. <laughs> uh, there's a story behind that bike. I'll tell you now. <laughs> so uh, there, there was a YouTuber <clears throat> goes by the name of the Cycling GK. He right. is a, uh, a cycler and he's a goalkeeper for the football team Watford Football Club. He has a YouTube channel and one of his YouTube videos uh, is him going to the Brompton factory where they make the Bromptons and right. he helps make bikes and blah, 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 blah. And at the end of the video, he's like, I'm going to do a competition where I give away a Brompton. Uh, and all you got to do is like this comment, no, like this video and uh, and whatever the hell it was i just did that naturally i just liked the video because i was like that's cool and i think i liked the comment that he wanted you to like <laughs> months go by right and i get a message through from the cycling gk congratulations jake you've just won yourself the brompton bike thank you so much for being a loyal fan this bike will go great for what you do i'm like okay okay fair enough thank you what what do you need and he was like uh if you could just email this place and then send your address uh we'll, we'll, we'll sort out the bike for you i'm like i don't know if this is rubbish but whatever okay so i sent it through about four months go by bike turns up at my door i'm like wow i've just got myself <laughs> three thousand pound bike for liking a comment on youtube i was like this is incredible <clears throat> You know what? I'll be honest. That bike would have been great for me, but I was like, I don't want. To, I don't want to ride a three thousand bike, three thousand pound bike in the UK. It just seems a bit too dangerous. So <laughs> I'd rather just give it to someone who would really appreciate it. So. Yeah, because I actually, I as I said, I actually have four of them. Uh, I, I and I actually have a tattoo of Brompton here. See? Wow. <laughs> wow. That's dedication, dude. Yeah. <laughs> uh, honestly, the bike looked incredible. It's the electric one, the really yeah. expensive one. But I just didn't want to. I didn't even want to take it out of the box because it was so expensive and so nice. I was. I don't. I'd rather just give it to someone who would appreciate it a lot more than I would. Like, um, so I pass it on to a guy. Um, who bought it off me he was a nice guy and he, he's been wanting one for ages so i'm I'm glad it went to a nice home in, anyway so right but yeah i i got it for free <laughs> <laughs> so so jake you said you you started with uh i mean you you joined that uh tour in germany with kevin boy and then where else did you tour with Cabin Boy? Where, oh, where we've else? been everywhere, dude. Um, I think the only place we kind of not really ventured out to at the moment is uh, America. Um, but yeah, we, we started in uh, the first tour was Germany, where I was just session. Um, and then I joined. Then we had a bit of a break shortly after that to write the Heartless album. So there wasn't a lot of touring going on during then. But then as soon as we started getting that ready and started releasing songs, I think we went to pardon, uh, Empiricon Festival in Austria, Download Festival in the UK. Uh, we went uh, to the Philippines. We've been to Russia twice, Ukraine, uh, done multiple UK tours, uh, and that's just the ones that are coming to my head. So, like, we we really toured off that uh, the Heartless album, and then um, and then we we and then COVID hit. We was actually halfway through a tour. Uh, we was three days into a UK tour when COVID hit, and they started closing down the venues. So we actually had nowhere to go. So we was like, right, well, we've got a couple of days to another show. Let's just see what happens. So we went home. And then they just closed the venues entirely. We had to go drive 200 miles just to get our equipment out of the van. Um, so, yeah, we've done, we've done multiple tours all over the world, uh, but we haven't done anything since COVID. Not, not one show. 
yeah so i actually i i actually missed your show in the in the philippines because the venue was quite far from the airport i i think you probably remember it's like so far right <laughs> i've i've never done that much traveling in my life dude <laughs> Where we're turning up to airports like half asleep because we're just flight, land, flight, <laughs> land, bus, car, dirt track, venue, play, back to the airport, flight. Oh, right. so, so much traveling on that Philippines tour. I, I, when, when, um, when, when we was looking it up, I was looking at it and I was kind of like scaling the size of the Philippines compared to like the uk i'm like okay like <laughs> i can't imagine the drives are going to be that long but jesus christ it was so <laughs> long <laughs> how how was how was the experience with the you know the at the shows the the fans and people who came to the show how was how was it um it was in, uh, it was the most surreal thing we've ever done even to this day I don't, I don't think we'll get an experience like that ever again. Now, I can't say absolutely everywhere we went, everyone knew who we were. Mm. But just because we were different and from the UK, everyone dealt with us like we was royalty. And that's not being big-headed. I just mean that as that's how we felt. Like right. we'd roll up and everyone was just so nice, offering us this, offering us that, um, trying to help us in any way possible. And they were just so happy to have someone from a different country come and perform for them. Because I can imagine like even massive artists don't go to these little towns that we were going to. Right. Maybe Manila. Maybe. But we was going to some remote islands. Uh, I mean, we did two weeks out there. Right. Um, so for for some people, like they'd never had a, a a metal band play in their town, or even an international band play in their town. So it it was it was a very surreal experience. Uh, I'll remember it for for the rest of my life. The uh, I'll also remember the size of the spiders. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh don't do spiders me yeah yeah that... <laughs> you know one of the surprises for me was like uh in my village the they had a show do you know the band Sinsenum? uh the joey jordison band the one that he created leaving after leaving Slipknot. uh do you know it rings a bell yeah go on so they played in a warehouse in my place like just like one block from my house i just walked yeah. to the venue and it was so surprised it's it's like it's not it's in manila but it's like where, where like a village. Outskirts. yeah outskirts. it's not a venue it's just, just a warehouse and and i was so lucky that i could i could actually see joey jordison before like because he passed away already last yeah. year that's, that's that's a good thing to have yeah uh, and I'm waiting for Slipknot. Actually, I, I also have the tickets for Slipknot from 2020. Still, they haven't cancelled the show yet. Oh, the postponed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I was very surprised to see, like, when we went there, like, a lot of bands that were going, but they were only going to Manila. Right. So I can imagine, like, for the country, there's a lot of people booking flights and to head over to Manila to go see their favourite bands. And then it all gets postponed. I can imagine that's very, yeah. very frustrating. Um, but I, 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 when we went, uh, I noticed a lot of like posters and stuff for Luke Holland, which is a drummer um, that uh, I'm very familiar with. He's currently playing drums for uh, Fallen in Reverse. Yes. Um, I, yeah, I actually went to the Luke Holland show. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah we, we saw a lot of posters for that when we was there. And he, I'm sure he was there shortly after we was um but yeah I, I i i can imagine it's very frustrating like especially like even even in the uk like sometimes uh international bands will only come to london mm. and then everyone from up north gets really pissed off because then they've got to travel all the way down so i can imagine it's even worse for the philippines having to get flights just to go see your band so yeah, <laughs> yeah. uh <clears throat> the heartless album I mean, I really love 
the songs of that and i think i mean you had a great run with that album and yeah. especially songs like like rip uh follow me and i i love the flood the rip i actually love the music video you actually had fronsila on that album yeah. right yeah <laughs> uh, that was uh, that was uh, that was an interesting turn of events so yeah basically with with rip um we we had that song it was named completely different it was called the accused originally and it right. was just a, it was just a song didn't have fronds on it and as i said we went to uh empiricon festival uh and uh, uh, tiller was on it uh we shared a dressing room with them and um we just got on it was it went quite well and then we just slipped into talking about like oh it would be great to do a feature he said, fine, here's my email, shoot him an email. We shot him an email a couple of weeks later, all went very well. And we, we kind of kept in contact. I wouldn't say much over the pandemic, but we kept in contact for quite a while after. Uh, he's a sound dude. Um, he's very chilled outside of um, what he, he posts online. Right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, uh, basically he, he, he recorded the video. He sent back what he thought was his best we was like, that's great. We're happy with that. And then uh, he had a UK tour. And when they came over, we planned to meet up with them before sound check, like in the morning to uh, would you, would you want to shoot your part for a music video? So we found this location near to where they were playing that looked very similar to where we shot our parts in the video. So they kind of looked like they were in the same place. Right. Uh, and then, uh, Connor went as well so Connor was in the background so what we wanted was to not look like we've green screened him in or he shot his parts in America and we shot our parts in the UK we wanted Connor to be part of it as well so it looked like we were all in the same place at the same time which uh, I think we've done that quite well uh, but the two locations of where the Franz part was and uh the the band location was about 150 miles away from each other so right but but it, it i think it it really worked because i i watched the yeah, video it yeah. doesn't feel like it's two different places yeah no it, 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 it uh you gotta give a shout out to jay jay's uh the guy that does all of our music videos even to this day um he still does our music videos and he's he's not let us down yet he's smashed every single one so we're very happy with how our music videos turn out yeah uh jake so i i i heard uh that you guys use the you you guys use the term electronico uh, yes. to describe your your music can you tell uh -huh. me what does that mean okay so electronico it's um electronic music and metalcore music, uh, bond them together, you've got electronic core music. Now, what that is, is like, uh, so we play, especially on the Heartless album, there's a lot of like EDM, a lot of dubstep, a lot of like synth, and we just make that very prominent in the mix. So normally the guitars are quite rhythmic. There's not much going on to when the guitars are. So you, the synth does all the leads, all like the prominent stuff that you hear. And that's just basically the genre of electronicore. So it's just, um, it's just a, a genre of metalcore that has prominent electronics that you, uh, you can dance to. It's just basically dance music added on to metalcore. And it, it, it helps with uh, <laughs> when you're playing a live show, it, it helps you be able to like, implement into the next song you can have like a bit of background like electronic music you can even have an interlude where it's just like a, a dance track and it just gets everyone in the crowd like vibing it just gives you so many more opportunities to do something with your music right. um yeah it, we're, we're, we're we're with the new new album we've kind of toned down on the electronics it's still there still sounds like cabin boy but we've we've kind of changed our sound a bit. We've dropped the tune in, we've added more riffs, lowered down on the electronics. But that's basically what electronic core is. Right. So so you mentioned about the new album. I know that you're going to call it Sentiments, right? And yeah. it's going to be out when? So it will be out 27th of May. 
couple of days after my birthday. Right. Uh, so yeah, we've we, we've released the first single um, called Survivor that came out on the 9th of December. Uh, we just released a week ago uh, Demons that came out on the 21st of January. Uh, and so far, Demons has been our best release to date. We got 100,000 views just on YouTube alone in less than a week, which is the most we've ever got in that time period. Um, so, yeah, uh, we've still got a couple more singles to go, and then the album's out 27th of May. So we're, we're really stoked for this one. We're, this, is, this is becoming the best release pardon uh best release we've had so far uh every everyone's morale is very high at the moment we're all buzzing with how everything's feeling we're we've got a couple more things to do uh with the label a couple of music videos to still shoot um but then yeah we've got a big year ahead of us right so so this will this is go, coming out of afm records right afm German, records yeah German. yeah right right um jake so i i saw that you uh outside of kevin boy you also man you have also worked i think you founded also spitfire management can you tell me about spitfire management yeah so um a couple of years ago um well it's not only that because <clears throat> i've <clears throat> sorry because <clears throat> i've always uh been into music i've got a lot of friends of mine that also are into music but they're not at a higher stage they're like just starting out or local band level and um they're when it comes to writing music releasing music they just like i'm like come on dude like it's common sense this is how you should promote it this is how you should do this and i was kind of like more telling them what to do than anything it was like just make yourself look professional don't just go oh we got a new video coming out soon here's a little clip what do you think of this and then you're already giving away what you're, you're going to release later down the line. So basically, it just got to the point of where I was um, telling my friends, like, tips on how to, like, work their band. So I, I just said, right, well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll start a management company. Not big time. It, it will just be, like, me working with you, my friends. I'm not going to go public with it uh and so i was like yeah let's let's just do that and i told connor um the vocalist the cabin boy that i, I was going to start a little management company up uh that i just want to help some friends out it's nothing it's not going to be much bigger than that it's just that I'll, I'll have it under a management name so it looks a bit more professional on my friends accounts uh, and it was literally just going to be that but then Connor got involved and Connor took it to the next step. He he, he ran the whole thing. I'm, I was just like, I just wanted a name. That's all. And he's, he's taking it to a business level. Now he made a website. He made a roster. Uh, Connor basically just took everything over and was like, right, wait, money, let's get this done. Let's put some money into this and have some, you know, get a good roster, get, get a good name under ourselves. And, um, yeah, so we started it with me and Connor uh, under a thing. Uh, but then uh, shortly after we actually got the business out running and we started getting some bands on our roster, um, I fell really ill. And uh, I, I had to take a step back from the management. I had to take a step back from the band for a little bit. Uh, I was like, I, I, can't, I can't do this. I just don't have the mindset or anything. So um, I said to Connor, look, mate, you, you've you've basically bought this up <clears throat> yourself um it's basically your thing um the only thing was spitfire was uh, was my my name because uh in the uk we've got a, a an esports team called the, the london spitfire and i i was a big fan of them so that's why i called it spitfire management right. um and that that's the only thing of mine that still going with it so i uh, right now i'm not a part of um spitfire management um that's it's, it's all run by connor it's all him but i know that if if i said to connor that i want to get back on it and i want to be part of the team again he'll let me come back in but as, as of right now i'm not part of spitfire management it's all connor it's all run by him 
and uh, he's doing a great job of it. Like some of the bands that he's got on there are doing incredible things, getting on radios and getting on tours, and yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, a lot of work he's doing, and he's doing he's doing a great job. Yeah, I I noticed also a couple of bands. They're like calling Apollo. There was a band called Calling Apollo, which looks really interesting. Yeah, they they yeah they they it's doing really well, doing really well. Right. So so Jake, uh, what's your message to the people who's going to watch the video, especially people from the Philippines? Okay, so um, well, are you you mean the new singles? Yeah, you're just your message, whatever you want <clears throat> okay, to tell them. Um, well. first thing i will say is um if you're if you're going to check us out for the first time uh i recommend listening to either survivor or demons as of right now um we've still got two more singles to come out which i don't know if we've announced the names of those publicly yet but uh we're still uh, basically anything that's coming out in 2021 or 2022 uh, that you'll see on youtube that's what we are sounding like now um we've had i've seen a few comments of people that have listened to the two singles that we've released and then gone back and listened to some of the older stuff and gone that's not quite the same band as i was mentioning before we used to be heavy electronic or like right a lot of electronics a lot of dubstep whereas we've kind of toned down that on that now we've got a different sound going we still sound like who we want to be uh but it's not the same sort of thing so um yeah give give survivor give demons a listen um that's who we are representing now that's what we're going to be for the foreseeable future but obviously we we don't forget our roots um go listen to the heartless that was the album re- we released in 2019 if you want to go back even further we had two EPs pathways and voices they are like what we at the time was uh making our sound we're trying to figure out who we were so um yeah give give us a listen let us know what you think give give us a comment right jake anybody you want to shout out to oh shout out um yeah uh sam and joe uh graves mike kingswood from inner sound studios the we we spent three weeks at the inner sound studios recording uh sentiments the new album um so they dealt with us for three weeks so shout out to them they 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 were incredible um uh jay jay hillier the videographer who does all of our videos he's incredible does an amazing job every time uh max who done all the artwork for us max incredible um he really really patient with us cuz we was very uh fussy with how we wanted our artwork mm. very fussy so a lot of back of like i think it was 5 6 months of like no can you change this no can you change that oh yeah we like that but can you change this just uh he, i can imagine he got really pissed off with us at one point but uh yeah max is a legend um obviously there's loads of people we've had to deal with during this process but they're the three main guys we had to deal with um throughout the whole process of the album um uh, tom our manager uh he, he's had to deal with a load of our rubbish <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and and then <laughs> afm records uh who haven't had much to deal with our rubbish because we don't go direct to them we go for our manager to them but the afm have been great we we flew out to germany to go meet them when we signed the contract and they were very nice they understood our message they understood where we wanted to go and uh they've they've basically just said look you guys do what you want to do we're we're just along for the ride just don't do anything stupid so uh, <laughs> so we love afm they've been they've been great for us so yeah <laughs> yeah so jake uh, thanks for joining this podcast and i no really worries, enjoy buddy. your you know cabin boy music and i'm looking forward to the new album and hopefully you guys can start touring again uh you know oh uh, yeah 100% <laughs> uh one one thing i will say though um is i would like to come back to the philippines it was it was an experience so i feel like it was a once in a lifetime but i would like to make it twice in a lifetime because even though we we went there we went there not knowing what was going on so right. we had one guy who was our tour manager who was called Jed 
uh, he um, he basically showed us where to go, sorted everything out. But I don't think we took in where we were for a while because of so much traveling. If we, if we did like one show day off, one show mm. day off, and in like the bigger cities, um, I think that would be more beneficial for us to kind of just sink it in where we are, take it all in, and um, yeah, yeah, right. it was an incredible time. We'd lo- I'd love to, I'd definitely love to come back. It was it was an experience. Right. So, Jake, uh, lastly, tell everyone how they can uh, listen to Cabin Boy music and how how they yep. can purchase your music, albums, whatever. Yep. Um. So, uh, Spotify iTunes, any streaming service. If it's got, if it plays music, we're probably on it. Mm. Uh, YouTube, that's where all of our music videos are. Uh, everything from the Heartless backwards is all on our YouTube channel, which is just Cabin Boy Jump Ship. All the new music is being released on exclusively on AFM Records. Uh, so if you want to catch those, you have to go on the AFM channel or, or just search up Cabin Boy Jump Ship and I'm sure all of the videos will come up. Um, I, I'd really appreciate if people did check out the videos because we've put a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money into some of these videos and Jay's done an incredible job. So uh, just just to see the visuals alone, I'd like go check it out, leave a comment of what you think. The comment's are always nice to read. We read every single one of them. We... we uh we're on social medias instagram spot of uh, what the hell am i about instagram uh facebook uh, we have twitter we don't use twitter much but uh we we do uh go on there sometimes um but yeah uh we're, we're on every social media platform you can think of we're probably on it we're even on russian facebook vk right. We're right. everywhere, dude. Uh, we might not be on it every day, but we are on it, and we do go on it every now and then. But our main ones, Instagram and Facebook, we, we're on those daily. Uh, and then, yeah, our, our music can be streamed anywhere. Yeah, so just search for Cabin Boy Jump Ship, right? <laughs> Cabin Boy Jump Ship, yeah. Right. So, Jake, thanks again. Uh, have a great day ahead. Uh, no worries, looking buddy. forward to talking to you again in the future. And maybe very much. the whole band. Uh, yeah, well, let, let's reschedule this for when the album's out and I'll let you know how the album went. <laughs> okay, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> no worries, Have buddy. I appreciate day. it. Thank you. Have a good day. Peace.